All right. So to review quickly, everything we learned yesterday, this is not recording, there we go. Everything we learned yesterday is this. This is an angle. We'll call it angle A. This is a leg of the triangle. This is a leg of the triangle. If I'm at angle A, this leg, because it is across the triangle, is the opposite leg. This leg, because it is right beside A, is the adjacent leg. Now, if I go up here to B, then this leg becomes the opposite leg and this leg becomes the adjacent leg. And this ratio of comparing opposite to adjacent is called the tangent ratio. And on your calculator, it is the tan button. So no matter what these lengths are, the angle doesn't change. And the tangent ratio is the opposite measurement divided by the adjacent measurement. Now, a great many students seem to think that tangent is some kind of measurement. It is not. Tangent is the result of dividing these two measurements. Okay? Every angle, if I make this angle slightly steeper, like this green line, please notice the A didn't change, the adjacent didn't change, but the opposite changed. So the decimal will change depending on the angle. Is everybody cool? All right. Now, when we are doing trigonometry, we always care about one of the angles in the triangle. That angle gets a special name. That special name is theta. And we use this symbol to recognize that. That is the angle that we care about. Now, in this triangle, since I already know 30, that's the angle that I care about. So that means theta equals 30. Does everybody follow me to there, including Sam, who was not here yesterday? You cool? All you missed was the reason for all this. If you can pick up what you do, you'll be okay. Everyone's cool with that, yes? Once I decide on a theta, that means that that is how I am going to view the triangle. Okay? So here is my happy, smiling face with my gray hair. I'm green because I'm not feeling well, maybe, but I'm fine. There I am. That means I am looking at the triangle here, which means I look across the triangle, and what do I see? X. So opposite equals X, because that's what I would see if I looked across the triangle, yes? Now, if I am standing right here, I can see two sides of the triangle that are right beside me, can't I? One of those sides of the triangle already has a special name. Which one? The hypotenuse. You only get one special name. You only get one nickname. So this side is already the hypotenuse, which means the only other name available to us is adjacent, and that is what 24 is. So the adjacent side equals 24. Does everybody follow me to there? Now, in all math, your job is always to find the unknown value, isn't it? Okay, so you know that tan of some angle that you care about equals opposite over adjacent, right? Now, do I have these symbols? Do I have information for some of those? What do I have? Do I have an invitation? Do I have information for theta? What is it? 30. 30. Equals. Do I have information for opposite? I do, but it's unknown. 
Do I have information for adjacent? What is it? 24. Now my job is to find that x. Now, we do not miraculously know what the tangent of 30 is, but our calculator does. The tangent of 30 is just a decimal place. It's just a number, just like pi is a number. So don't write down what I'm about to write down. But if I showed you this, uh, 10, no, 10 too easy, uh, 7 equaled x divided by 3. How would you find the answer? You would do, you would multiply this side by 3, they would cancel, now x is by itself, and then you would multiply this side by 3. Does everybody understand the algebra? Great. Well, 7's a number, isn't it? Isn't tan 30 just a number? So how will I solve this? I will multiply this by 24. What will happen to those two 24s? They will cancel. What must I do to this side? 24 times tan 30 equals x. Now, we cannot do this in our head like we could do 3 times 7. We must go to our calculator. And here is where you must know how your calculator works. If you have a forward calculator, you will punch in exactly what you see. 24, you might not need to push times but you might need to push times. Who knows if you need to push times? You, when you use your calculator. Your calculator, if you have a forward calculator, like I do, I will push 24 tan. I don't need to push times. And then I will put 30 there. Now, I don't need to close the brackets in this question. But in future trigonometrical work, you will need to close that bracket. So it's a habit you should get into now, even when you don't need to. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? Technically, you don't need to brush your baby teeth because they're all going to fall out, right? But do we teach all of our kids to brush their baby teeth? Yes, to get in the habit of brushing your teeth when you are old and you are stuck with them for 80 years. Everybody understand? So I am going to close that bracket. Then I push equals. Everybody good? If you have a forward calculator, you should be looking at that number. How many decimal places do I like? Two or one? I don't even care. Okay? The more decimal places you use, the more accurate your answer will be. We are going to do something right now that is a little funky, okay? So now I have an answer, right? Nobody wants to write that many digits, so we're only going to write, we're going to round it off. You can round it off to two decimals, round it off to one decimal. I don't care because you've shown me the work and I can work with that, all right? So if I'm going to round that off to one decimal, what is it? Right, 13.9. If I'm going to round it off to two decimals, what is it? 13.86. I don't care which one you use, okay? I don't want to stress you out. I don't want you to waste brain power going, oh my God, does he want two decimals? Does he want one decimal? How do I round? Ah. Just write a number. Round it to something, but round it correctly, okay? I am going to round that to two decimals, so X is going to equal 13.86. Is everybody cool? I'm about to show you that. Everybody with a forward calculator can get to here, yes? Now, if you have a forward calculator, you get to turn your brain off for a second, and I'm going to talk to the backward calculator people. To do this on a backward calculator, you need to go 24 times 30 tan and then you must hit equals. A bunch of you won't. Because when you have a backwards calculator, as soon as you hit 30 tan, your screen's going to change. And you're going to think you're done. But you're not done on a calculator until you push what button? Equals. equals. And then your backwards calculator will show 13.86.
Is everybody in the room cool now to 13.86? All right. Now, I'm going to write right there 13.86. Now, how will I find Y? Pythagoras. 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 Why? So 13.86 squared. Don't write this down. Plus 24 squared will get me Y squared. Yes? And at the end of it all, I'm going to need to square root, aren't I? So that would get me Y. Everybody understands the math, yes? Now I want to show you something. Here is the number I need on my calculator, right? It's not rounded, is it? I know I need to do future math, don't I? What do I need to do with that over here? I need to square that, don't I? If it's sitting on my calculator already, I can just hit the squared button. All of you could do that. And some of you, will it will write this. And some of you... It will just square 13.86. And it will show you the number. Everybody cool there? Now, to that, I must add what? 24 squared. And I get that. Right? And then what must I do at the end? So for me, I go square root. Now, please observe. It's hard to see, but do you see that? little three letter a n s there most of your calculators have that somewhere around the equal sign please notice on mine it's a second function like sine cos and tan tan minus one if you if i hit second answer it will give me the very it holds in its memory the very last thing that you pushed equals for so for me, the very last thing I pushed equals for was 768, wasn't it? Now on my calculator, it shows a giant screen. I've got a whole bunch of calculations there. I don't need to remember anything. But a great many of you have only one line of, memor uh, one line of uh, screen, right? So for you, it's sometimes, oh man, what was that number? Was it 13.86? Was it 27? Well, I don't remember. Your calculator does with the ANS button. So for me... I can see that I need 768. But once you push square root, you might not see that 768 anymore. But you can go answer and get it back. Now, my calculator will square root that answer. And just while we're here for fun, see how that has the square root and then ANS? That should look familiar to you. Why? Vans. That's where they got the symbol. In 1968, the guy that invented the symbol used that. Anyways. Total. Yeah, he's a nerd. We shouldn't respect that guy. He's only a bazillionaire now. Nerds are stupid. Why would you ever want to be a nerd? Bill Gates. $94 billion. What a dink. Especially if you can make a couple of million dollars being a rapper, right? Why would you want to make 94 billion being a nerd? Just like Justin Timberlake says in The Social Network, a million dollars isn't cool. A billion dollars is cool. But that's okay. And those guys were the kings of nerds. They were so nerdy they had to invent Facebook to try and get laid. That's how nerdy those guys were. They couldn't even do it themselves. There's the answer. Twenty seven point seven. I think it's twenty seven point seven one. All right. Now, why did I show you that answer key? Because it's going to be more and more useful as you get later into math. But you don't need it. But look what's going to happen. Remember how I rounded that off to 13.86 right there? So if I do that, 13.86 squared plus 24 squared, and then I square root that answer, 
please notice I get a very slightly different decimal place. Now sometimes that's going to screw up your rounding. Which isn't a big deal. Except you people, if this had been over 5, then I would have had 27.72, wouldn't I? And if I wrote 27.72, some of you would say, uh, I have a totally different answer than you, Mr. Myers. How did you get it? Is it a totally different answer? Of course not. Okay. So if you are going to round this early, you're going to get a slightly different answer than me at the end. But it does not matter because the math that you did is the same. Does everybody get it? All right. Now, all 30 of you should be able to do the three questions at the bottom of page 55. Because it's exactly what we just did. If you're in doubt, you could slide back to the bottom of 54 and see that it's the exact same three questions. Find an angle, find an opposite, find an adjacent. Down here, it's find an angle, find an opposite, find a hypotenuse, then find an adjacent. Everybody do those three right now. Please be aware that there are two skills at work here, isn't there? They're setting it up, and then there's using your calculator. Maybe you're a little nervous about your calculator. Then just write the setup. Okay? If you were to get to here and then you were scared of how to punch in your calculator, you could stop and I would still give you full marks. Does everyone understand? Okay? Go. Sam. You use shift tan. So on your calculator, instead of pushing 24 tan 30, you would push 24 times shift tan 30. Or second function, whatever your calculator button is. So let me show you, Sam. Just watch right here. Yeah, I know. I know. Just watch right here. I'll do this one for you and anybody else who can't remember how to find an angle. So my theta is x, because that's what I'm seeking. That's the angle I care about. Once I'm there, 23 becomes opposite, and adjacent is 15. Cool? Then tan theta equals O over A, right? So now I fill in what I know. Tan x, I don't know the angle, equals 23 over 15. Now to solve this, you need to find out what that decimal is. So, there's a long way to do it. You can do 23 divided by 15 and get the decimal. Or you can do this. You have a forward calculator? Yes. So you are going to push... Sec- do you have second or shift? Second. Tan. Just the button that says tan. Then pu- open a bracket. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, your calculator will show 10 minus 1. It'll show that. Then 23 divided by 15, close brackets, then equals. And you'll get 56. And angles we round to the nearest angle. Because angles, like inches, are not done in decimals. Angles are even weirder than inches. Angles are done in minutes and seconds, like time. 50, you'd round it, if it's 56.7, what is it? I can't remember. Yeah, so it's 57 degrees. Um, kind of. There's three, there's three things I want to show you there. Everybody else is good? Everybody is doing those last three? All right, 
like the previous page, it's the exact same questions. And like all math, if something works once, it always works. So we have now done six questions where we wrote out theta, O, and A. So that must mean here on the seventh question, we can do that again. Do I know theta? It is x. Do I know the opposite? It is 35. Do I know the adjacent? It is 50. I know that tan theta equals O over A. Then all I do is fill it in. Tan x equals 35 over 50. Do I know the angle? No, so it is a shift tan situation. If you have a forward calculator, you were supposed to write out what you punched in. If you had a backwards calculator, you were supposed to write out what you punched in. That's why I made you do it. I watched, most people didn't bother to write it out, and now they are asking me how to do this. That's okay, I don't mind too much, it's early. So to punch this in again to a forward calculator, it is second tan bracket 35 divided by 50 close brackets equals two punched into a backwards calculator it is bracket 35 divided by 50 close brackets shift or second or whatever you have tan and then you probably don't need to push equals on most backwards calculators but you might if you do do if you don't don't and what do you get for an answer 35 degrees. It's 34.99, I believe. So, of course, we round it off to 35 because angles are not measured in decimals. Now, in your assignments and textbooks and tests in the 10th grade, you will sometimes see angles measured in decimals or it might say round it to the nearest tenth of an angle. That's not really the way we do it. That's to practice your rounding abilities. Everybody cool? All right. Now, again, as always in math, if it works once, it works every time. So if it works eight times, it's really going to work every time. In this triangle, do I have a theta? It is 60. Once I have established that's the angle I care about, now I can do my opposites and adjacents. What is opposite to 60? X. How do you know X is the opposite? Because it's across the shape, which makes 7 the adjacent. Now, tan of 60 equals O over A. Number is on the bottom, so what do I do? Multiply. 7 tan 60 equals x. If you have a backwards calculator, it's 60 tan times 7 equals. And you get something like 5.1, isn't it? I don't remember. Oh, this one's 12. Okay. 12.1. Yes? Now, am I going to need that value again? Yes, because I need to find y. So should I clear it off my calculator? No, it's sitting right there. I can use it, right? What do I need to do to that 12-point blah? Square it first. Then add what? Seven squared. Then push equals. And then square root. And what do I get? 13.96. It's exactly 14, I believe, if you... Don't round here. It's 14 exactly. If you don't round. And here is what I mean by that. If I go, now please watch. 7 tan 60, close brackets. Oh, wait, clear. You don't have to do it this way, but watch. 7 tan 60, close that brackets squared plus 7 squared equals 196. 
because I didn't do any rounding early. And then, of course, I square root my answer, and I get exactly 14. If you rounded this to 12.1 and used 12.1 when you did Pythagoras, you would get like 13.96. Everybody understand? I don't care which way you do this, but as you go further in math, you are going to need to be, and in physics, if you take physics, you are going to need to be more and more exact. So you should learn how to do this without rounding in the middle of the question. That's why I showed you that answer key. And that's why I showed you not to clear off the big decimals if you're going to use them again. Everybody cool? All right. And then the last one, of course, it's worked a million times. It's going to work again. Theta is 80. Once I am set up there, that's my opposite. O equals 10. Adjacent equals X. Tan 80 equals opposite 10 over X. And as I was showing Helia at the front, when the number was on the bottom, we multiplied. When the number's on the top, we divide. X equals 10 over tan 80. Punch that into your calculator. It's 10 divided by tan 80. If you have a forward calculator, 10, 1, 0, divided by tan 8, 0, close brackets, equals. If you have a backwards calculator, 10, 1, 0, divided by 8, 0, tan, equals. And you get... 1.7. It's 1.7. So you would round it up to 1.8 if you were going to one decimal. You make that decision. I am tired of wasting air and oxygen and my energy on talking about rounding to a 10th grade class. Round it to what you want, but round it properly. Clear? That is what I was just showing Helia. Tan 80 is just a number, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, so watch. Uh, 5 equals 10 over x. What's the answer? 2. You know that automatically, right? But if we're using decimals and weird numbers, you don't know it automatically, so you do algebra. How do I get rid of that x in the bottom? I multiply by x. Now they cancel, right? If I multiply this side by x, I multiply this side by x. 5x equals 10, yes? yes? How do I solve that? I divide by 5. x equals 2. So, at the end of it all, I had to do 10 divided by 5, yes? yes? So, look back at the beginning of this. Aren't the 10 and the 5 available to me? So, you just do 10 divided by 5, because you're going to need to do that at the end, right? So, now come over to here. Here. What's in the way? Multiply both sides by x. So x tan 80 gets me 10. Then I got to divide 10 by tan 80 to get my x. Yep. Everybody good? All right. Now, since I just gave you nine minutes to work and a bunch of you left your page blank, I'm only going to give you a one minute break now. And don't leave the room. You have a one-minute break, then we are coming back to work on page 56. Ten, one, zero, divided by. Now, how do you get tan 80? You go 80 tan, 80 tan, then equals. So your calculator knows you want an answer. Then you're probably not in degree mode. There you go. Yes, quiche is, quiche, you mix up a bunch of eggs, like scrambled eggs, right? Crack a bunch of eggs in a bowl, mix them up, pour in a bunch of cheese 
and a bunch of uh, veggies, maybe some ham, peppers, onions, put it in a pie plate and bake it. And then it puffs up and you get like a scrambled egg pie. Some people like them, some people don't. Quiche, yeah. Some people like it, some people don't. A lot of people don't like eggs at all. My daughter doesn't like eggs in any form. She doesn't mind eggs cooked into things, obviously. She likes cookies and brownies and things and waffles. But if I give her a plate of eggs, she's like, this is gross. But then, if I give my son a plate of fried eggs, my daughter wants to dip in the yolk. But she doesn't like any other kind of egg. I don't know. She's weird. All right, let's do math. Uh, On page 56, please cut at about a third of the way down the page. Draw a horizontal line. Because the first thing we're going to talk about for angles in the real world is something that we're going to talk about. So, everybody draw on the left side of your page a face. It doesn't have to be a good face. It can be any kind of face. I just need you to draw a face. I'm going to draw a sticking out tongue. Everybody cool? That face is in a head. Yes? If that person was looking to the right, draw a line along their line of sight. So if I'm looking to the right, I would be looking horizontally straight across the page. Everyone agree? I don't care how far you draw it, Jacqueline. You can draw it as long or as short as you need to. And we're going to pretend that's perfectly horizontal. Everyone agree? That is where your eyes are right now. If I am not writing on the screen, most of you are looking at me in the eye right now. Your eyes are level. Agreed? And I'm looking at you level. Yes? All right. Now, let's pretend there's no roof on here and a helicopter flies over. What do you all immediately do? Look up, every single one of you. No matter how cool you are, no matter how old you are, if something flies over you, you look up. I've seen grade 12 rugby players, a plane fly low over the field, and they'll be like, plane. And they're supposed to be the tough guys, right? Like, everybody does it. When I'm refing the game, if I don't need to be refing at that particular second and the plane flies over, I look up at it. We all do it. Nobody is immune to looking up at a plane. I challenge you to find, some, walk down the street with a friend, hear a plane, and just check it out. And he or she will be, uh, plane. Okay? Okay. So, over here, I'm going to draw me a plane. Everybody cool? Now, until that plane flies over, my eyes are horizontal, yes? Once that plane flies over, where do they go? Up. So I'm going to draw a new line of sight up to the plane. Yes? So my eyes went from flat to up. Agreed? What did I just create? I created a right angle triangle, didn't I? Because the plane is at some point above the ground. Yes? Everybody cool? This angle right here, this theta, red theta, is what we call an angle of elevation. Or an angle of inclination. Because my eyes went from flat up. And that angle between the two is where my eyes elevated or inclined up to. Is everybody good with that? For some reason, everybody can handle that. It's easy peasy. Everybody's got it, right? Okay. Wasn't very nice. His school life is like hell because that other kid is here. What a horrible thing to say. One kid said to the other kid, my day is, or my school is hell because you're here. I don't think they meant it either, Kaylee. But if you are of a religious persuasion, I think that 
calling any part of school hell, the same as the eternal damnation that hell is supposed to be, might be a little bit soft on your part if you think this could be construed as hell, if you believe in that stuff. All right, back to business. Um, So everyone's cool with an angle of elevation, yes? All right, now the plane has flown away. (laughs) Plane's gone. Left a red trail. Uh, I don't know why it did that. Who cares? (laughs) Plane's gone. Where do our eyes go back to? The red line won't erase. Now I look like an idiot. Nobody asked any of you. Sooner or later, I will offer the magic pen to you people. And the person that has the guts to accept it will start writing them, oh my God, this is hard. And they'll get all stressed. You all think it's so easy to write on this thing. It's not. Anyways, plane's gone. And just screw you, plane. There, got it. Everybody good? You continue to walk down the street with your eyes back at level, yes? And then all of a sudden, you notice on the ground a $20 bill. Where do your eyes go? Down, creating what? Another triangle. Your eyes went down, and now we have a new theta. The green theta is what we call an angle, not an andle. An angle of depression. I know, it's so sad. Or an angle of declination. Everybody cool? The angles live between the horizontal and where your eyes go to. Everybody understand? Now, everybody gets it when you're on the ground. Because, oh, plane, uh, oh, $20, yeah, right? Everybody can figure this out. It's no problem. Where you guys have problems is here. Plane's back. On the plane, there's somebody on the plane. That plane sees me on the ground. Plane. Where is the angle of depression? Is it blue X or is it, I better change to a vastly different color, green X? Where is the angle of depression when you're already up in the air? Is it blue X or green X? Green X. Because the angle of elevation and the angle of depression is always between the horizontal, and where your eyes go. So until the person on the plane sees me on the ground, their eyes are horizontal. Then they look down and they see me on the ground. There is my angle of depression. Everybody cool? Now you're intelligent young people. If my eyes on the ground go up to the red line and this person's eyes in the sky go down to the red line, What do I know about my angle of elevation and their angle of depression? It's the same. Everybody cool? Please notice that this angle and this angle are nothing. They are just the third angle in the triangle. Is everybody good? All right. That's the first part about angles in the real world. Down at the bottom here, cut your page in half. And there's two other ways we use angles in the real world. They achieve the same goal, but we write it down differently. How many of you have watched, you know, a fighter pilot movie or something where they talk about the bad guys are coming in on a heading of 287 degrees, right? You've all heard that. That is the other way we use angles in the real world. So everybody draw one of these. North is at the top. What's this? Southwest. Never enter stinky washrooms or whatever. 
Never eat shredded wheat. Never eat soggy wieners. Um, uh, nice elephants swim well. I don't care. All right? Which is silly because all elephants swim well, even the ones that are mean. Nobody thinks an elephant can swim well, but they're actually quite amazing swimming. Not so hot at skiing, but great swimmers. How far is it to go around a complete circle? 360 degrees. So when you hear people talking about a heading of blah, blah, blah degrees, this is it. North is zero. East is 90. South is 180. And West is 270. So if I were to tell you guys, we're going to go on a hike. Get out your compasses. We're going to walk for six kilometers at a heading of 43 degrees. Where is 43 degrees? In here, yes? It's almost exactly northeast, isn't it? So it would be up this way. Agreed? Where do I start counting from? Zero. So where is the 43? Is it purple X or is it blue X? Purple X. This is 43 degrees of a heading. I would walk that way. Everybody cool? Now, if I needed to do trig with this, then I would need to know what? I would need a triangle, right? Do I have a triangle? If I do that, I do. Or if I do that, I do. Does everybody understand? I know this is 43. How big is this? Not 180. No. No. If the whole thing down to east is 90, yes, this is 47. Because all the way would be 90, I used 43 of it. Does everybody understand? This is what they use when they are doing search and rescue for people. This is what they do. They get out a map and they draw this stuff on it. Everybody cool? So if I were to tell you guys, go take a... 6.2 6.2 kilometer walk at a heading of 197 degrees. Where would you be walking? Down here at 197, correct? Where would I start counting? No. Zero all the way around to 197, correct? Which means if I needed to do trig, what would this be? Right in here. 17, because it's all the way is 197 to here is 180. What would this be? Um, 90 minus minus 17, which would be 73. And then I could do trig. Is everybody cool with that? It's adding and subtracting. Yeah. Everybody's good. Okay, that's one way we do directions. There's another way we do directions. Please draw another one of these. And again, uh, noble uh, eagles soar wildly. Nice. Okay, everybody good? Okay, now the other way we write directions is this way. We give a direction... So northeast, south, or west. Then we give an adjustment. And then we give another direction. And it's a little confuzzling. So I'm going to write out what it would look like. Uh, North 38E. East. So that would mean if I was starting right here, I am being told to walk Start looking north, but I'm not really going to walk north. I'm going to walk 38 degrees to the east. Where is east from here? 
over here. So I'm going to walk off this way. And how big is this going to be? 38. How big is this going to be? 90 minus 38, which is 52. I'll help with that. Everybody understand? So now I want you to draw the following line on here. Uh, east, 18 south. Where would that line be? Take a moment, draw it on there, and then put in the two angles that it gives me so I could do trig once you've drawn the line. So according to this blue line, what direction? If there were no other instructions, what direction would I be walking? No. Straight east. The first one is where we start. Then I adjusted 18 degrees to the south. So where is that? Down or up? Down. There. Where's the 18 go? Right there. And what goes there? 72. Everybody cool? Now, you are intelligent young people. If this line is east 1872, isn't it also south 72 east? Everybody understand? The way we write it, the way we usually write it is 45 as the split, right? If you're less than 45, it's east, 39 south. If you're greater than 45, it's south, less than 45 east. Everybody understand? Yeah. Everybody understand? Okay. Do you want to try one more or do you think you got it? Okay, we'll do one more. I want you to show me west 27 north and then put the angles in. So where would I go from here? Straight left, straight up, or somewhere in the middle? I would start straight left, but I've adjusted 27 degrees here. Making this 27 and this 63. Everybody cool? Now, obviously, if you're going to be doing search and rescue, people don't always walk in a straight line, do they? So what would happen if I knew that the person I was searching for turned direction here? What would I have to make? Another one of these and do it all again. Everybody cool? So I maybe went down there and then I would have to do 90 minus and 90 minus and that would give me that whole angle. Everybody good? All right. I don't have a lot of questions doing this in grade 10, but I like you to see it because in grade 11, there's a crap ton of these. Okay? There are a bunch of these in grade 10. Everybody cool? Okay. Your job today, and you have uh, 15 more minutes in class. Now, please notice, because this is a textbook page, I have given you the answers, like you would have in the back of a textbook, right? So, would I ever mark a textbook page? No, because the answer right there, great, you all got 100, you're brilliant. But can I use the textbook pages to come around and check? On the X minus to check plus scale? Yes, indeed I could at any time I want. So if you are doing, going to do your homework, then I would recommend, even though I know nobody does this, cover the answers, try the question, then check the answers. Now there's a couple of things on this page that I need to remind you of. Number 11 causes a lot of problems. Number 11 uses percents. 20% is what? As a fraction. 20 over 100, right? Right? Have we been dealing with fractions in this unit? Of course we have. That's your O over A. Everybody with me? 
because 20% is also 0.2, which is the decimals that we're used to using. Everybody cool? Great. You are going to have trouble with 19 and 20? Try them. Do not go, Ugh, because you can do them. You've got 15 minutes now. This is homework tonight if you don't get it done. Deal? Go.